What has been the toughest individual lesson to learn to build a strong and healthy marriage? Uh, wow. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, just because then you can finish it off nice. I would think that the toughest individual lesson is learning to die to yourself. Um, we got married young, which in a way I think is easier probably than getting married older because then you've like kind of set your ways, whereas we were young and really not so, but you still, there's just a dying like, oh, well, he doesn't screw the toothpaste top. You know what I mean? Just like crazy I things. Still don't. Yeah. <laughs> but it's stuffed on the chute or, you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, and then you throw kids in there and all that too. But yeah, yeah I would say. Um, Dying to yourself. Yeah. Yep. So before Pastor Lee answers, I'm, I'm sure Pastor Lee is really easy to live with. You probably didn't have to die to yourself that much. Right, but exactly. I mean, could you, <laughs> would you give, if, if possible, give a specific example of where you felt like this is a moment that I had to recognize that I had to, like, instead of trying to compromise or to assert what you wanted, that you chose, like, this is a moment where I need to, like, to kind of go low and die to myself? Um, probably, if I'm going to be honest, probably like ministry, just because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And, um, and then finding out afterwards that it was, you know what I mean? And just struggling with that out of my own really insecurities in that and having to grow in that, like, I'm Jean, I'm not Beth Moore, you know what I mean? Like, and so I think that was part of it. Um, and he never put any like pressure on me, but it was more for me to be like, this is my life. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to love it. It's a privilege and that kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Like for me, that was because he definitely knew his call and what it was and all that. And I felt like Jane pony up and let's do this kind of a thing. So, and she's done a great job. I mean, uh, I, definitely the toughest individual lesson, I think to build a strong marriage, it doesn't matter who you are, is that idea of dying to yourself. Uh, and in that way, marriage is a great discipleship tool because Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Well, that has played out more in marriage probably than any other practical relationship that we have. <clears throat> and like Jane said, we were married very young and uh, 20 and 21 when we got married and you know you're not you're not I don't care how spiritually mature you might be you're not really relationally mature at any age when you first get married especially when you're super young and and uh, I <laughs> I told Jane I was called into ministry it wasn't a bait and switch but in her mind she saw marriage through the lens of what she had grown up in which was uh, the pastor's wife didn't really have any responsibilities uh, the pastor preached on Sundays and, you know, went home, studied, and more of a denominational background. And as time went on in building Radiant, obviously it's grown and our dynamics are different. And even in the charismatic Pentecostal world, there's so much um, pressure that is put on the pastor's wife to be a preacher, to be a leader to write books, and, and that's great if that's what you're uniquely called to, but it doesn't diminish uh, the role of a, of a wife, of a help me, and Jane has been an incredible, an incredible pastor's wife, and, uh, but it's been a learning curve, and we've had lots of conversations, and she definitely died to some of her own desires or comfort zones in order to support me and my calling and us and our calling. And because of that, I say that the pastor's wife in the church probably has the hardest job in the church because my role is clearly defined. Hers is not necessarily. But So that's a great example of that. But in my own uh, experience, it's also been dying to myself because you know, we look at relationships so often about getting our needs met out of the relationship. But if 
we're really honest about it. Marriage is about dying to your own way of doing things individually and trying to find a way to do it together and honor one another. And so in my own immaturity, you know, I, I like things a certain way when growing up. It's like, I don't want my socks balled up. I like them folded in half. I like my shirts quartered. Uh, and fold it in a certain way. And I don't do any of that. So I'll <laughs> fold it, and then he refolds it. She still does not it. do it right. So I, I asked my wife if, you know, hey, could you not do this with my laundry? And yeah. she's like, you could do your own laundry if you and want to. And that's what she said. And then I said, that, uh, then I will die to myself. Yeah. I'll let you do it for me. Yeah. And so uh, I have died to myself. She has helped me die to myself <laughs> on some of those areas. But the, the beauty of that is, Marriage is about two becoming one. It's not about two coexisting individually. And that's the biggest lesson. That yeah. So this is a really quick follow-up to that. You guys spoke a lot about, you know, relationally or maybe preferences, but what would you say to two people that, you know, they individually love the Lord, felt like they have a calling from the Lord, but maybe those callings don't look the same. And so now they're coming together, you know, in, in a dating or marriage relationship and who has to move to who, who has to, if it feels like it's like a calling from the Lord in a specific area of ministry. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, it does. And those situations are so difficult to yeah. navigate through uh, because they're hypothetical. Uh, but I would say if you're in a dating relationship and your callings, your, if both people have a very strong sense of calling and ambition, and they don't work together. Don't get married and try and force it uh, because that's going to be a point of conflict. If you are married and you feel that tension, then what you need to do is have a mentor, a uh, pastor or a leader or somebody that you can trust that can help you walk through that and help prioritize that, maybe help find areas of continuity where you can support and strengthen one another. Uh, the Bible says that you know a strand, a three-chord strand is not easily broken apart. Off, most of the time we take that scripture to mean husband and wife plus the Lord, and it's true. But oftentimes when we need strength in our marriage, we need to add a counselor. There's safety in a multitude of counselors, and they can help. And two, I think that there is a, um, a beautiful, like, compromise, like, not compromise, but um, yeah, companionship absolutely. kind of a thing with it, like, it's your gifting, your strength, my strength coming together. Yeah. I mean, unless one wants to go to Africa and one wants to stay here. Right. I think it's, you could pretty much You can find those. a compromise. Right, exactly. And so. Jane and I are totally different. I mean, we are radically different individuals. Uh, but the Lord knew what he was doing because when he, when he called us together, and I really do believe this is our calling to lead a people, to lead a church, and to lead a movement of churches. Even though I'm the out front guy with the, you know, the, the pastoral calling and the teaching, I couldn't be who I am as a man and as a leader if it wasn't for the gift of Jane and the leader that she is, the mother, the example, the she prays, she has wisdom and discernment that helps me in ways that people don't even know. And so we instead of her trying to be like me or, you know, me not being who I am in order to not put pressure on her, we've learned a way to work together, and it's, it's beautiful. 